going to give I am some praise tonight. Recognizing God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost to the protocol that is already established going directly into the word, brief word, 150th number of Psalms. This is this word tonight is a, I don't know if this is a word, English teacher, but a participatory word. Amen. Did I, I got it. Amen. I got that thing. Amen. Amen. High five somebody and said, I mean, we got to do some things tonight. We got to do some things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to switch the game up a little bit. 150th number of Psalms says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of a trumpet. Praise him with the psalm tree and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. Come on and give God praise. In my closing, because <laughs> the word is indeed what it's going to do. Amen. You can be seated if you need. I don't even have a, 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 a title for tonight. Amen. But sometimes we need to understand why do we praise? Why, why, why do we praise? Why are we telling you to clap your hands and say amen and run around the church and all these other kind of things that we do? It's not because of a good feeling because truth be told, I don't always feel good. Come on, somebody. As a matter of fact, we ought to praise more when we don't feel good than when we do feel good. You know, I'm, it's time out for saints that praise him only when they feeling like praising him, or only when God has blessed them with something, because God is not a something, he's a someone. I praise him because of who he is, and because of who he is, I get those some things along the way. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. So... God has commanded that we praise, and praise is so important that he says, let everything, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. So praise, the first thing I understood is it must be important. Then God inhabits the praises of his people. That means he loves it. He inhales it. It's like life unto him. Now, how many of you know that God is life? So he doesn't need life to be life to him because he's life all by himself. But our praise is so important that it's like life. He inhabits it. He inhales it. He inherits it. He wants it. That he declares, I don't care how hellish you are. Don't let nobody tell you that you got to be holy to praise him. Come on, somebody. Now, the, another lesson for another night, the difference between praise and worship. Come on, somebody. But he says, I want everybody to praise me because he created the whole universe. And then God says in Genesis that everything I made was good and very good. So I want everything that I made to praise me. Have you ever been rotting and, and, and were just at awe at the universe? How the trees are blooming and the birds are flying and, 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 and everything is just creating. And, and it's, it's codependent on itself, but everything does what it's supposed to do. Nobody had to tell the Mississippi River how to flow its current. Nobody had to tell the fish how to swim in the sea. Nobody had to tell the dog how to bark, the cat how to meow. Everything God created was perfect. And then we get a headache, let a fingernail fall off, and we won't go to church. Come on, somebody. Come on now. Let me, let me, let me help those that says that we don't need to go to church. Those of you that's live at home, let me bless your soul. Because he says in the very first verse, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. 
Yes, his sanctuary can be at home, but there's a difference between individual praise and corporate praise. How many of you know sometimes my praise won't cut it? Sometimes I'm in a place of disobedience or sometimes I'm in a place of offense or I'm grieving or I'm, I'm hurting. Sometimes I need to be surrounded by others with a corporate praise. I was talking to Miss Punt too today, and I told her, I said, I just ain't feeling it today, Sister Pascal. I said, but I sure can't wait to get the praise. Whereas everybody else want to go home and get a nap, that ain't my testimony. Let me bless the saints of God. Let me bless you. Let me bless you. We are not of this world. We just here. We just, we just pilgrims journeying through. So we can't do what the world do. We can't call in to church and use up all our sick days every time something don't go our way or every time something ain't, ain't falling or, or our money ain't fat or we don't have a new dress or we don't get the mic or our name wasn't called. Y'all know how we do. Come on, somebody. One thing I've learned is we're not going to all get along with one another. But we're still supposed to all praise with one another. <sighs> now, I, I'm going to say this. Because I've been testifying little by little about this miracle y'all getting ready to see. <laughs> and this past week, Mother, I have... The enemy has been attacking my body so hard this week, so hard physically. And I said, God, this was my exact words when I pressed said, God, give the doctors a name so I know what's wrong so my miracle can just come on, Lord. Just give it a name. God spoke to me and said, the name of it is Miracle. Let me tell you what praise will do. Because it seemed like the heart I praise, the more he attacked my praise. And and I told lady, I said, lady, I just can't, I can't, I just can't. I'm I'm hurting. I can't, I can't no more. And she said, You a lie. You a lie, and the devil a lie, and you will, and you can. Amen. Let me tell you what praise does. It confuses the enemy. He wants us in a place of silence. He wants us a place where our hands won't go up. He wants us not to get down on our knees and lie prostrate before the Lord. He wants us to not go in prayer at home and in our private places. He wants us to turn to K97 instead of 94.5. Come on, somebody. He wants us to give up. He wants us to overeat instead of fast. God won't, I mean, the devil wants us. To react like the world. Somebody ought to say, I need you to flip it. I need you to flip it. It's time to flip that thing and start to look at it in some spiritual eyes. In the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter and the third verse. The Bible says, to appoint unto them the Mount in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that, ye, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Let me help those. That some, Sister Pascal, you said it Sunday, and you, you absolutely right. I used to hate for people to say it, but it's the truth. I do. I be in my feelings quick. You know, you know I'm, I, I am who I am. I, you understand what I'm saying? I want to Sheila since she's back there laughing. Amen. <laughs> but I've had to learn that I'm very sensitive in the spirit. And so it is in the spirit, so it is in the natural. I never understood why I could pick up on things so easily. Let me tell you what happened last, last Wednesday? Thursday. Last Thursday. I was feeling so edgy, Sister Vaughn, all day. And I kept telling my coworkers, I told Sheila, I said, something is going on. It's somebody I need to be praying for. I said, I can't get 
where I need to get to, but I'm feeling so heavy, and it ain't me. Ain't nothing wrong. I'm good. Promise you, I'm good. But something, I could feel that thing. So that evening, I did. I got a call, and I got some bad news, and, and that, that bad news just sat down in me. I went home, and I just, you know, you know how it is when you get a call, and you get some news that ain't so good. That's a spirit. Anything that calls you to act outside of your natural habitat is a spirit. What do you mean, Brother Cor? We are not physical beings. We are spiritual beings. Now, spiritual beings attract other, come on, spirits. There you go. You attract other spirits. That's why spirits are transferable. We are just like magnets. We attract what's like us. But every now and then when you rub up against something that's not like you, it leaves residue on you. Come on, somebody. The Bible says to try the spirit. Oh, the Bible is just teaching us so much about spirits. Try the spirit, by the spirit. Every spirit is not of God. Everything ain't for you to carry. So sometimes, mm -mm, that ain't what I want to say. What I want to say is, do you believe God will allow us to go through something where we can't praise? He inhabits the praises of his people, and sometimes we get heavy, but that's not natural for us. So that means it's a spirit, but it's not a God spirit. Am I teaching tonight? So God says, hmm, I got to do something for my people because I can't have them with their hands down and their heads down. He says, I will give you a garment. I wish I had my coat. <laughs> I will give you a garment of praise. You cold, I'm just going to, y'all got to go in your spiritual imagination. You cold, you put on a coat, you're no longer, come on now. You're heavy, you put on your praise, you're no longer heavy. Here's what I know, the spirit of heaviness and God's spirit can't dwell in the same place. You're going to either be cold or you're going to be hot. You can't be both of them. Have you ever felt some kind of way and the right praise and worship song came on, never would have made it, and you found yourself smiling in the midst of? That's what I come to encourage you tonight. You are not your circumstances. You are not where you are. Come on and just let go and let God and give God his praise in your car, give God praise in your home, give God praise in your office, give God praise at Fujian, give God praise at Exxon, give God praise at First National, wherever you are, let your mouth be filled with praise. Why? Why, Corey? Let me tell you what praise do. Let me show you. I'm going to go over to Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. I didn't write a verse down, but I think it's the 18th verse. And that ain't, yeah, no, it's the 21st verse. 21st verse. Second Chronicles 20 and 21st verse. Amen. And when he consulted with the people. <laughs> He appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord, for the mercy endureth forever. Every time we greet each other, because we warriors, we ought to be praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, my brother. Praise the Lord, my sister. All is well and everything is fine. Praise the Lord. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. Every time somebody tell you you too deep, you tell them thank you. Because that's what we ought to be doing. We ought to be iron rubbing up against each other. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not worried about what the have and have nots got going on or what's not going on right in our, in our community, in our school, or even in our marriages. God ain't worried about that because he done already fixed it. I will praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. 
And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Let me stop right there. If you are a praiser, it's dangerous for something to come against you. <laughs> Let me tell you how important that Judah tribe is because I might not be a warrior, but I am a praiser. And before the warriors even come out, the praisers got to come. And the Bible says before they did anything, God had already set ambushes against everybody, not that came against the whole army, but just came against Judah. You got to know how important you are. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of the Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. Wait a minute. Now, if we go back up, wasn't they just on the same team in the verse 22? But now in 23, are they not against each other? Oh, look at what the Lord will do. <laughs> the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. God will cause your enemies to start hating one another, utterly to slay and destroy them. You ain't even got a fight in this next battle you're getting ready to go into. If you just continue to give God praise, God will let your enemies take care of themselves. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. That thing you're battling with, just praise him. Praise him. Your weapons ain't carnal. Just praise God. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. You mad at me? Praise him. <laughs> God bless you, sister. I love you. Bless the Lord. God bless you, my brother. You're going to get over it one day. You better forgive me. I forgive you. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. God bless you. God be with you.